okay, so let's say you get vetted in and then you show up and you're kind of flirting. I just imagine there's like a room of a hundred people that are all just like banging everywhere. And it's just like a, this writhing, like carnal situation. Like I'm thinking like eyes wide shut. You know what I mean? It, can you, is, are there I mean, some yeah, that are like me, that? Can you dispel the, that? Yeah, with describe the party. Because again, you. I have no perception of what this could be. You kind of do because you went to Burning Man, right? Yep. So you've seen people just walk around topless as, like there's no thing. So mm -hmm. so there's like this free expression of uh, sexuality and it's safe. So at Burning Man, if you have your tits out, it's not like people are like, you know, like we look, but mm -hmm. it's not like a place where you feel, oh, I need to cover up, right? So there's that aspect of it. And also in order to engineer a good sex party, it's actually more important to make the party good. So we really do a good burner party, right? that the sex is optional and available. Just like there's food, you could eat it or not eat it, but the party has to be fun. So we have different areas where people are social, people are having a drink, people are hanging out at, you know, uh, by the hot tub or like they're just dancing. Is that a separate room? Like yeah, it, we have multiple rooms. I mean, it, in order to host 200 people, there's like different rooms and, and, and different areas that people could dance, be social, spank each other, to having a massive orgy, to have a smaller room. So uh, is it frowned upon if you were just to go and then be like, actually, I'm not really feeling it tonight and I'm just going to kind of have a couple drinks and eat and just talk to some people? No, you are poor by doing what you feel like doing, mm -hmm. right? So no pressure to playing. Also, I actually encourage a lot of couple who never been to a play party, not playing that first party is a smart strategy to see how you feel because you could always have it later. And then talk about it when you go home, mm -hmm. you know, and talk about what came up for you is more of a is a better learning experience. Um, and it's tough because we don't have that much control over what we find arousing and turn us on. You kind of have to like it's like porn. You kind of know when you see it. Right. right? You sort so of need exposure. You need exposure. Like, yeah. Huh? Oh, it's like <laughs> I didn't know that was hot. And that's kind of weird, but hot. And yeah, then, yeah. so sometimes I really bring couples. Uh, it creates intimacy. It gets them to really talk about their desire because otherwise like you don't and you're not allowed to right most of the time like when you have an established relationship looking elsewhere is frowned upon on so it, it is a different it's, it's a different experience you know yeah and then as far as like the actual details of like showing up like are there a lot of in terms of the crowd because in my mind also i'm like i'm sure you probably get like single dudes that or i don't know this is my assumption you might get single dudes that don't have a lot of sexual options. And they're like, okay, I'll just become a member and then I'll be able to bang all the time. And I might not be a guy that takes care of my body and I might be a little overweight. And this is just my avenue to like getting a lot of like free, easy sex. And so how do you like, I guess it's that vouching system, but like, how do you make sure that everyone there is like desirable, if that makes sense? Uh -huh. And also, yeah, I guess like how, how do you vet that you're getting like the right people? Is it all through the vouching system? Is it through specific invites to be like, oh, we need this class of attractiveness? Like, how do you get rid of not attractive people? Like, how does that work? There's no, so we do not judge people on looks. Okay. It's really, so that is, that's one of, part of what makes Hacienda special in my view. Um, so we have a very diverse crowd when it comes to people, like all sorts of people, but what, what we have in common is we're here to celebrate sex mm -hmm. and it's a fine a sense of belonging without being slutty mm -hmm. and being curious about sex and like having social sexual experience um but it's also the vibe people bring right so what you what you're describing is like this this incel creepy guy who you want to prevent from having the party but if you don't do the social part and make friends right then no one will vouch for you so it kind of eliminate okay. all the people who will not make friends because you you're the guy who people don't want at party right so you have to kind of be the person that people want you at the party first hmm. the surprising thing is the way more women than it's 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 so hard to find good guys to come to the party than really? women yeah so so what what is that what do you think that's about you know, every bro, like, I'm going to have a threesome or like, I'm going to go to OG. But when it really gets down to it, it's intimidating to, to you know, they talk a lot of shit until it actually happened, right? right. To, to fuck in front of a bunch of stranger is still a thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I believe, so it's a f common fantasy, but when it actually come to the party, it's a different story. And so you think one. men get more intimidated than women do in that regard different they're intimidated differently because i mean that's why and this might be a gross generalization not easier but when a man's arousal 
has so much to do with like if his erections, mm -hmm. like can they stay hard, right? So there's a different level of performance anxiety when it comes to men, but men are really clear like if they are having erection or not having erection. Mm. So there's that aspect of it. And I love coaching that topic, but um, uh, when it comes to women, it's different. Like they are afraid that like their performance anxiety is that, I'm gonna take too long, I'm gonna come, or I'd be self-conscious. I think every universally people will go through that, but it's, it's still surprising. It's so surprising to me that it's like way more, way more women at the party always, but we are like always on the hunt for good guys, mm -hmm. right? In some ways, sort of like the old school gentleman culture, when you have like a gentleman group where we kind of hold other men accountable and behave in a more civil manner. So we just have our own culture. So we really try to have among the men to kind of like have a sort of a, a way to educate and train other men because you, you're not, you're not, you you don't have to be thirsty here. Really, Like it's so abundant. Yeah. Right. So you don't have to hunt the same way that you would think you need to do in order to be successful. Mm. And so do you find men kind of like police the their own like masculine culture amongst each other at these parties where they're like That's what we really try so hard to do because sometime I I I coach a I work with a lot of men and I coach a lot of men and there is this whole idea of this toxic masculinity, right? And I, definitely there's definitely assholes out there that like you know, that cannot be reformed in any way or never wants to. <laughs> right. But I do believe there's tons of guys out there who really care about uh, their partner's pleasure, who don't want it, want to be respectful, don't want to harm anyone and don't want to be a shitty human at all. But sometimes they just don't know how to behave in this particular setting. So we really try to educate people, even when they make mistakes, like, okay, it's okay. Like it's your first time, but this made this person uncomfortable or whatever. And then you go like, why don't you do it this way? Oh, that's, so we that's really, cool. It's so not just banning. It's like, we try to educate more than like, like when you're trying to educate someone, but if they're defensive, they're not open to it, then, then that's the wrong character, right? Right. But we approach it as someone who is not always intentionally doing something malicious with their intent. And obviously it depends on the level of, of violation, but sure. we really want to educate more than, uh, just blacklisting people. Right. All the so time. if someone is like, you know, at like a level two phase, they're like making out with a girl and then they get like too touchy and she goes, Oh, I'm going to leave. Then that's where you'd come in and be like, Oh, you were actually a little too touchy in that situation. Maybe try it this different way. Yeah. Or ask, like, you know, if you want to escalate, you know, check in. It might be a good idea, mm -hmm. you know? And also, uh, it's also saying thank you when someone wants to exit rather than like, fuck you, why are you leaving? You know, mm. it's like just being grateful for the experience for, for that person else. setting a boundary uh, right, and gotcha. respecting that boundary, because we know how hard it is actually saying no to people in general. Right. And some like depending on your level of disagreeableness in your personality trait. So some and a lot of people are not so comfortable saying no. So we want to create an environment that is as comfortable as we could make it about stating yes and no. Right. And being accepted or rejected is part of the, the, the experience. But it's also most of the time is it, it will work out, yeah. Because there's a there's abundance of people available, right? So so at your events that you do back in the day and at Hacienda, that it's Hacienda, right? Yeah. So at Hacienda now, what is the the policy as far as like testing, STDs, condoms, like? How does that work? So we have a safer sex protocol. We always have a safer sex supply at the party, like gloves, condoms, lube. Uh, pads, like everything that you would need for a hygiene uh, and barrier protection standpoint. And as far as your uh, your sexual health status, we expect the members to know and people are encouraged and trained to have those dialogue. Just go like, when was the last time you got tested? What is your current status? And then you are responsible stating your boundary or your requirement when it comes to your sexual health. So we here's all those sexual health protocol that you could you could opt into, but it is your responsibility to ask if you go like, hey, I really don't feel comfortable having sex with someone who have X, Y, Z. It is really way more it's safer for you to be the one who's asking than waiting for other people to disclose. Got it. So while you're in sort of like that, that I feel like that would, in my perspective, that would mess up the vibe. Like if you're making out with some girl and then all of a sudden you're like, are you clean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so how would you bring that up? Like if you're in a sex party one on one with someone? We want people to intentionally kill the vibe for those, not kill the vibe, but it's okay to be awkward and kill the vibe because the price of not killing the vibe is actually too high in my view. Right. So you should, checking is good. So it's actually a little bit of impulse control and a little bit of like, you are doing things 
that might lower your chances for you to have a safer time. What, what would you say if you were hooking up with someone and you're like making out, how would you bring that up? How would I bring that up personally? Yeah. I would just say, hey, the last time I got tested is XYZ. What was yours? That's it. I disclose mine and then I ask. Got it. So it and we train people to do that. Mm -hmm. So they have practice saying that and then it's an option and expect it. And some people are more risk, like they, their risk tolerance is higher and lower. So we don't, so that's why it's really hard to preach there's only one standard on how to practice that. If you are comfortable with that level of risk, then it's up to you. But you should know your level of, of uh, your risk tolerance and what is your requirement so you could communicate that clearly with another person. Got it. And that doesn't happen in the real world, except like when you have a culture, but in the long in the long run, it really works out a lot better that you could have a lot more sex much safer mm. in order to do that. So, so you would ask about testing status and then you'd be like, do you want me to use a condom or something? And then they would say yes or no. Yeah. And then you could operate with or without one if you wanted to. Yeah. Got so you always you always just say you know you 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 stating your boundary and it's it's really important to get clear on what you are comfortable with and what you are willing to opt into. Mm. So we make people think, right? So if I like if I was going to invite you to a party, I would go like, hey, what is your sexual health status? You know, and what are you comfortable with? I would talk to you like you know, and you should think about it before you talk play with someone, right? Because it's a big concern for a lot of people who go to sex parties. Yeah, and I feel like most people just in the regular world don't really think about that. They're just like. I got tested in college once and I think I'm fine and I just don't want to hook up with anyone with diseases. Like that's what most people I feel like. Say. Yeah, but they rolled they rolled the dice that way, right? And some people are more comfortable rolling the dice. So it depends on the person, but we always tell people to respect your risk tolerance. Yeah. 